after the um, after lower decks. I have it down here somewhere. Hello out there, I'm the Oldest Nerd. We're talking about Kayshawn, His Eyes Open, this episode of Lower Decks, introduces two new characters, one of which is Kayshawn. Uh, this is um, throwing back to the Next Generation episode, Darmok, where Picard uh, encounters a race of people who speak only in metaphors. And so uh, we have Kayshawn who joins the crew of the Cerritos as the chief of security to replace uh, Strax, who was uh, killed in the last episode of the first season. Um, he is um, having difficulty memorizing his Federation standard. This is something that has not been talked about uh, on screen anywhere, but uh, in some of the novelizations, uh, they indicate that there is a Federation standard language which everyone speaks. Now, uh, this is uh, a way they don't say necessarily that it's English, although that's what we hear, but uh, there is a standard language among uh, everyone in the Federation uh, that they can speak without need of the Universal Translator. That's uh, something that they haven't really pointed out before in any of the series. At any rate, uh, we know that Kayshan has a, a bit of problem with uh, a Federation standard, and every once in a while he has to speak in a metaphor and have someone translate for him, which uh, the Lower Deckers seem to be pretty good at. At any rate... Uh, we see a couple of things uh, among other Easter eggs in this show, and uh, we've had some comments from fellow nerds saying that uh, there probably are too many Easter eggs and not enough plot. Uh, I don't know if that's the case in this particular episode, as uh, there is a, a pretty good A plot and B plot going on. But before we get to that, I want to talk about some other things they pointed out here that we've seen before, but really haven't seen in any detail, like a sonic shower. This was uh, used in Star Trek The Motion Picture where Lieutenant Ilea is uh, found, uh, or the probe masquerading as Ilea is found in a sonic shower. Uh, this is the only time that uh, I know of that has been mentioned much uh, on, uh, on screen of uh, being sonic showers rather than water showers, although uh, in one of the early episodes of Voyager, uh, we have Neelix in a bathtub, so uh, apparently bathtubs do exist. Uh, this also harkens back to something we've seen on Enterprise, where they would take a uh, gratuitous um, semi-nude scene, and uh, they did that when they were um, disinfecting after uh, going onto a planet. They would uh, rub gel all over each other, and uh, this was something that uh, Rick Berman, the uh, producer of Enterprise and of most of the treks after the second or third season of Next Generation, uh, he wanted to put more sex in most of these shows, uh, which is why um, Seven of Nine wore the, uh, the tight cat suit, why uh, also T'Pol wore a rather tight-fitting uniform in Enterprise. And there are other examples there. Um, um, Troy, for instance, uh, who wore very form-fitting things in Next Generation before finally getting into a uniform. At any rate, they show the sonic shower here, and uh, the, it, it is a communal kind of thing where uh, everybody, without any embarrassment, it seems, uh, just goes and showers in a whole row. And uh, there is a funny little thing where they're adjusting the temperature on it and uh, shows that um, there is not only uh, in the 24th century uh, peace and harmony between people, but also uh, a lack of any kind of modesty. That's kind of interesting there. Our main story with the Cerritos crew 
is uh, encountering uh, a collector. And uh, you may recall from an episode of The Next Generation called The Most Toys, where data is collected uh, and uh, forced to uh, stay in a, uh, in a collection. And uh, he's thought dead by the crew of the Enterprise, who almost leaves him there. Uh, but um, without getting into that show, uh, they um, deal with one of these collectors who uh, is uh, calling on the Cerritos to come and help him uh, salvage uh, a collection from a fellow collector who has passed away. Uh, there is adventure in that and some rather interesting throwbacks uh, in that as well. We see in the collection um, a, a skeleton of Spock II, which is a reference to Star Trek the Animated Series, where um, I forget what the uh, name of the episode is, but uh, basically uh, a um, uh, scientist by the name of Caniculus V has found ways of improving uh, humans by uh, making them into giants, and uh, Spock II was one of those uh, people. At any rate, uh, so the skeleton of him is in a collection, quite obvious. Also, uh, if you recall the episode, The Game, where Riker brings back this thing that fits around your eyes and shoots into your eyes and it becomes rather addictive, uh, there is one of those games in the collection as well. There is another new character that is introduced. His name is Jet Manhaver, and uh, he is taking over Voimler's bunk and duties. He's another ensign. However, uh, he has uh, the leadership qualities that Mariner does, and so that leads to uh, a certain amount of rivalry between the two of them uh, while they go on an away mission into the collector's ship. And this is... Um, they find that as they are uh, one-upping each other that uh, the real um, uh, solution to some of the problems they're facing was not in either of them. And uh, an interesting, uh, very Star Trek kind of thing to do. Um, we have reference. We also have reference made to Kalos. Uh, a uh, photon torpedo is uh, carried around. And uh, we also see the engineering tool that was used in the original series, which had, um, it looked about like a, um, gee, I don't know what it looks like. It, it was uh, that uh, they used in engineering in order to work on uh, the warp drive. Uh, this was used in um, the Doomsday Machine and in various other uh, things as one of the major tools that Scotty used. And so uh, that was uh, there as well. Uh, on the other story at uh, the USS Titan, where uh, Boimler is the uh, helmsman for the uh, Titan, uh, he is sent on an away team mission in which uh, Riker's crew, which is very gung-ho to go and um, shoot bad guys, uh, seems to go against Boimler's whole idea that uh, Starfleet should be about exploration and boldly going where no one has gone before. And um, that is a, a well-handled piece of the plot right there. Uh, they make some references to the Enterprise D, which uh, evidently uh, Boimler has watched all the next generation and uh, has almost kind of a hero worship of Riker. Uh, but uh, the other crew members kind of mock him by saying, you know, that the uh, this ship had three daycares and string quartets and things such as that. So uh, that is um, uh, where we are. There was a lot of action. Uh, we have uh, once again a very welcome uh, guest starring role of uh, Jonathan Frakes as Riker. These are all um, and and jazz references, of course. You can't get away without that. So uh, we hope that you um, enjoyed this episode as well. like to know what you think about it. Why not go to the comments and let us know? 
Also, if you've not subscribed to the channel, please do so. We've been kind of um, short on gaining subscribers lately, and it's something that's absolutely free and would do us uh, a world of good. So uh, we hope that you will subscribe, but also click the bell and know when the next video is coming your way. We're looking forward uh, to the uh, return of Lost in Space pretty soon, uh, also to uh, the Orville that's coming pretty soon. So until next time, don't go far.